Ari Aster is back with a three-hour epic about a man paralyzed by fear. It's like the Lord of the Rings for those with crippling anxiety. This review is brought to you by PayPal Honey. Go to joinhoney.com slash Merle to sign up and stay tuned after this review for more info. Hello everybody, I'm Dan Merle and this is my review of Bo is Afraid, which is the third feature film from writer-director Ari Aster. If you've seen this channel or really seen me talk about movies at all in the last five years or so, then you'll know that one of my favorite movies of all time is Ari Aster's first film, Hereditary. He followed that up with Midsommar, which is a movie that I enjoyed, although not quite as much as I liked Hereditary, but this is easily his biggest film yet. Joaquin Phoenix plays Bo, who's planning a trip to see his mother, until bizarre circumstance after bizarre circumstance gets in his way, and what should have been a simple flight home turns into an odyssey that legitimately defies description, with each bend in the road becoming more unpredictable and untethered from reality. After the success of Hereditary and Midsommar, which were both budgeted under $10 million, Ari Aster is cashing in all of his creative chips here, literally, because the reported budget of Bo is Afraid is at around $35 million. Some other places have it even higher at around $50 million. Either way, this is the highest budget ever given to a film from A24. And I think that that's particularly admirable in light of the fact that A24 is extremely unlikely to recover any of that money. Bo is Afraid is a three-hour surrealist dramedy that seems to dare the audience to stop watching, anchored by a 20-plus minute dream sequence that on its surface has little to no bearing on the plot of the movie, and that's one of the more normal parts of the last two-thirds of the film. Bo is Afraid is going to heavily challenge Ari Aster fans. It's going to challenge fans of the usual A24 fare, the ones that know what they're getting into, and it is going to utterly alienate any poor soul who wonders in off the street looking at the trailer of the movie or even is just kind of lightly aware of the kind of movie they're buying a ticket for. If I were a theater manager, I think that I would be very clear on what my refund policy is on this movie in particular because I think you're going to have two lines. You're going to have people waiting to pay to get into the movie and you're going to have people waiting to get their money back. I was lucky enough to be in Los Angeles last week during Bo's Afraid's initial weekend, its four theater run, and I saw it in a crowd that was probably the peak crowd for this movie. They were Ari Aster fans, they were going to see it in IMAX, on its opening weekend, they were primed and ready for the movie, and it really worked. I mean, the first third of the movie, everybody was on board. There was lots of laughter. Everyone was really digging this movie, and you could, like, feel in a room, almost physically feel the movie losing people as it went along, and then you get to the end of the film. And even then, I think that there was still a healthy respect for Ari Aster as a filmmaker when the movie ended, but that energy that was there at the beginning of the film had all but been sucked out of the room by the end of it, at least in my estimation. Now, commercial viability is not the determining factor when deciding whether a movie's good or not or whether it's worth your time. It's something that you can certainly look at as one aspect of a movie, but this is a thoroughly uncommercial film, just to be clear. This is the anti Top Gun Maverick. I think it's going to actively drive people out of the theater. That doesn't make it a bad film, it just makes it a challenging film. Now, I will say that if the entirety of Bo is Afraid's runtime had been able to sustain the world that Ari Aster builds for the first hour of the film, then it would have easily been one of my favorite movies of the year so far. The world that he creates at the beginning of this film is a surrealist, satirical nightmare, a well of cold, black comedy that had me and the audience I saw the movie with laughing loudly and often. But as Bo's odyssey progressed throughout the film, the space between those laughs got bigger and bigger, the story got less developed, the characters got less developed. Act 3 of Bo's Afraid is what I found to be a hodgepodge of bizarre plot twists, over-the-top imagery, and the culmination of what appeared to be every single one of Ari Aster's real-life neuroses spelled out on screen. Bo is Afraid may well be the most expensive therapy session in the history of mankind, and unfortunately for Ari Aster, when the time is up, I'm not really sure that anything actually gets resolved.
This movie is going to be a conversation piece, and I know how a lot of that conversation is going to go because people that don't like the movie are going to be told by the people who do like the movie that the reason they don't like the movie is because they don't get it or they don't understand it. And I disagree with that wholeheartedly. I understand what Ari Aster was going for. I get the tone that he was going for. Even the more abstract stuff that he is doing in this film, I understand the intentions behind it. I just didn't really like a whole lot of the last two thirds of it. I respect this movie, but I can't say that I liked it as a whole. It's too disjointed and unfocused, and it repeats a lot of imagery that was already seen in Hereditary. Not in a referential way either, but in a way that kind of left me wondering whether Aster either has a limited number of images that he can think of to put on screen, or whether he is stuck on just a few of these images in his mind when he's deciding what he wants to bring to screen. Either way, there was a lot of this movie that felt derivative of his earlier work and not just reminiscent of it. Now, I understand that there's going to be a lot of people who will like and even love this film because it's ambitious, and I do wish that more directors were as ambitious as Ari Aster, more willing to take risks and to make films like this, even though it didn't work for me. Similarly, I'm glad that A24 gave Ari Aster the resources to make this film because it's certainly unlike any movie I've seen before or likely will ever see again. But creative ambition and creative success are not the same thing. And just because somebody has the guts to make this movie doesn't mean that I'm obliged to like it. I can respect the fact that it was made and still not really like the movie. Bo is Afraid has some of my favorite things that I've seen in a movie in quite some time, but it's also the most frustrated that I've been with a movie in a very long time. And both of these things can coexist. The more optimistic side of me would actually be looking forward to the discussion around this film because I think a lot of the discussion around Bo is Afraid is what film criticism should be ideally. Defending the things that you like about the film, discussing the things that you don't like about it, analyzing the movie's meaning, but not in the pursuit of coming up with the quote unquote right answer about whether it's a good movie or a bad movie. Film criticism is just about talking about the movie and comparing notes and listening to other people's opinions and not feeling like yours is being attacked or that everybody's trying to sway you to one side or the other. Film criticism is analysis. It's not debate, for lack of a better word. There's no winning side or losing side. Now, the more practical side of me understands that that's probably not how a lot of the conversation about this movie will be, particularly online, but it is how it should be. We should just be talking about movies like this. That's why they exist and not feeling like we have to go to war over them one way or the other. A lot of times when we're talking about movies similar to this, David Lynch's filmography in particular, I'll sidestep the question of whether I liked a movie or didn't like the movie by saying, well, you know, it wasn't for me. And there are parts of this movie that weren't for me. However, there were parts of this movie that were very much for me. I will say that I do have some criticisms for this movie that extend beyond my own personal tastes. I do think that it has a lack of focus. I do think that there is a lot of stuff thrown into this film. I didn't really see much of a pattern to this. It really did seem like Ari Aster got the ability to make a three-hour movie and threw in every single thing that he wanted to into the mix, but the soup didn't come out just quite right, and it kind of broaches another topic that is, I think, a little uncomfortable, and I know that a lot of people disagree with me here, which is that sometimes I think that you do need to have somebody in the mix that has the power to tell a director no. I don't think that unadulterated creative freedom always produces the best film. This movie reminds me a lot of Damien Chazelle's Babylon. Both movies are about three hours long. Both of them are directed by young directors who have had success with their earlier films that were able to take that success and say, hey, basically, I'm going to make the exact movie that I want to make. And I think that both movies are the shadow of something great. You can look at both of these films and see the structure of the great version of that film, but I also think that both of them needed a guiding hand somewhere in the process to say, no, you need to go this direction or that direction. You can't just throw everything into the movie. Now, if you loved Babylon, then this is the kind of movie, Bo is Afraid, that you'll probably like a little bit more than I did. I just found this in Babylon to have the same fatal flaws. A lot of things in there that I really liked, mixed in with a lot of stuff that I don't really think added to the overall movie. I'm sure that there are elements in both films that were very meaningful to Ari Aster and to Damien Chazelle, but that doesn't mean that they're always going to be meaningful elements to the audience, and you don't always have to be slavish to what the audience wants, but you do 
do have to accept the risks if you are making something that is going to be such a departure. That means that not a lot of people are going to like it, and it probably also means that you're not going to make a whole lot of money, which may impact your future creative freedom. It's always a game of checks and balances, and there's never a right answer or a wrong answer. I just think that both of these movies, and Bo is Afraid in particular, felt a little imbalanced. Now, from a technical standpoint, Ari Aster remains a viscerally exciting filmmaker. Teaming once again with cinematographer Pavel Pogorzelski, Aster's decision to shoot the film in the 185 to 1 aspect ratio and A24's decision to book the film in select IMAX theaters creates an immersive world with dark shadows and pops of color that drive home the unreality of what you're seeing, capped off with a sound mix that keeps you off kilter in key sequences. This may not be as Aster's most successful film from a storytelling standpoint, but I do think that it is easily, including Hereditary, his best technically made film. Joaquin Phoenix is one of our most fearless actors, and he fully commits to the character of Bo throughout the movie. This feels like an experimental role for him as an actor, so I guess it's really no surprise that he signed on. His performance varies from relatable to broad, from method to madness, if you will, often on a dime. You don't have to admire the film, to admire his work in it. There's also a rotating cast of supporting actors, including Nathan Lane, Parker Posey, and Amy Ryan. The less said about their characters, the better, as the shock behind every turn of Bo's journey is a big part of the movie's appeal. And so now it gets boiled down to the question that I really try to answer in all of my reviews, which is, do I think that Bo is Afraid is worth your time? Well, that's a tricky question because it is a three hour long movie, which is a big commitment whether you're seeing it in a theater or deciding to wait at home and see it on streaming. My first piece of advice would be that if you do plan to see the movie, I would see it in a theater because as I mentioned, it has a lot of technical merit and the sound mix especially is really great in a theater. Otherwise, I fall back on what I almost always say when people ask me if they should see a movie, which is that you're the best judge when it comes to your own tastes. I'm just here to share my thoughts and feelings. And I have to say that Ari Aster remains one of my favorite working filmmakers today, and I was awed by parts of what I saw in Bo is Afraid, particularly in the first act. I just wish there had been more of those parts. I wish that I had been more immersed in it. I don't think that it all comes together very well. If you want to call it a failure, I'd say it is a noble failure, but ultimately for me, a failure nonetheless. So I guess it would not necessarily be a recommendation for me on Bo is Afraid, but it is one of the most interesting films out there. So I'm certainly not going to discourage you from seeing it. So, you know, yeah, maybe it is worth your time if you want to see what's happening in the world of cinema today, because as I said, Said earlier, you're never going to see a movie quite like this one. And it is one of the things that, I mean, obviously I'm the most torn on that I've seen in a very long time. So maybe you should just go see it and make up your own mind. I mean, that's really my advice anyway. Make up your own mind. If you're curious about this film, give it a shot. Maybe it'll work for you in ways that it didn't work for me. So those are my very long thoughts on Bo is Afraid from director Ari Aster. Are you planning to go see it? Let me know down in the comments below. And before we wrap up, I want to thank the sponsor for this review. Today's episode is sponsored by Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. Do you ever get that little burst of adrenaline when you find a good deal online? You know, when you're looking for something anyway, and then you find out that you just saved a few bucks or even more? Well, you can get that little thrill every time you shop online with Honey. Forget manually searching for online coupon codes. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds right to your cart. I was looking at some physical media pre-orders today because, well, you know me, and when I clicked on the Super Mario Brothers movie, Honey let me compare prices across several different stores online and also notified me of some deals if I bought it today. And it's so easy to use. Honey does all the work for you. All you have to do is click and save money. And Honey doesn't just work on desktops, it also works on your iPhone. Just activate it in Safari on your phone and save on the go. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out and by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this show. Get PayPal Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash Merle. That's joinhoney.com slash Merle, M-U-R-R-E-L-L. Thanks to Honey for sponsoring this review. Find out more about them in the description below. And thanks most of all to you for spending part of your day here with me. Stay tuned right here on the channel for more movie news, reviews, box office charts, and more. Until next time, stay safe, and I'll see you then. Bye.